tough act to follow, you know, like I uh, really enjoyed the presentation. I could keep going. Like um, I even have questions that I should get, uh, get hold of them uh, uh, on the outside. Um, a pleasure to be here again. I think it's more than 10 years um, of like uh, collaborating with many innovators. Like uh, I had a breakfast with Mark the other day and uh, we were talking about like uh, the first time we met. I think it was in Unilever, right? I mean, uh, it was, uh, Black Friars. 13. 13. Yeah. Yeah, and then you guys came to Black Friday too, right? Mm -hmm. To the office? We did. We did our first one to the event. So that's, uh, yeah. Uh, not Black Friday. Yeah. One so, yes, exactly. So it's always, a, it's always a pleasure, you know, like, uh, I think that we, we end up, like, meeting a lot of marketeers in industry events. Um, but at least for my case, I think we lack, like, forums where marketeers meet. You know, like I meet people in Cam, I meet people like uh, sometimes on the GAT or, or stuff like that. So to me, the innovators is definitely like uh, uh, always like an opportunity to, to get to know people uh, and, uh, and to reconnect with friends. Uh, and I was missing to have it like in person, <laughs> you know, like I think it's the first one that I did in person in like more than two years. So thanks for all the hard work you guys do for our marketing community. Uh, the Brand Innovators team, like, uh, yeah, we know, like, it's never easy to organize something like this, especially throughout the pandemic. So thanks for staying strong and, and building our community together. Thank you. Well, I joined Activision around almost a year now. It goes so fast. Like, um, and by the way, I, I will probably screw up the time. Like, they were very clear that I should stick to 25 minutes, but then usually I, I mess up time. But if someone can give me like a, a five minute warning, like the table is already like going crazy on the back there. So uh, uh, one year on Activision, before Activision, I spent a little bit over seven years on RBI, that's Project Team Team also in Popeyes, because like some really good fun there. Uh, and before that, I spent 18 years uh, uh, in the uh, And throughout my whole life, I play video games. Like I have every single video game you can think of. I still have my Dreamcast, which is one of my favorites. I was really good at Soul Calibur. Um, um, I have an Nintendo DS, a PDS, a Switch, a PS4, a PS5, an Xbox, an arcade machine that I bought in Mexico. So I have coins from Mexico to play on my own arcade. Um, so I have all this stuff. I have a collection of game watches. You know, it's very funny about my age. So I love Donkey Kong. I had that Mario Purple one that opened like sideways. Like, yes, I am a bit of a geek. Uh, and uh, I always loved that. And um, and I never thought I would work with video game, like to be honest with you. Like, and now I can very proudly tell my mom that all the time was well spent <laughs> and worth it. Uh, and and, and I, I always loved the industry and even more so now, you know, like because to me it's like one of the, if not the most hot uh, space in the market is definitely like one of the most hot space. You know, it's like, entertainment meets like technology that meets creativity that meets the metaverse and all the buzzwords that people are keep talking about it is really cool uh, it is a massive challenge uh to join activision you know because the company is incredibly successful right i mean we have call of duty which is like the number one in sales for more than 10 years now we have world of warcraft overwatch diablo candy crush yes candy crush is from activision this is a king um so it's amazing franchise, communities of players that are completely obsessed uh, about the game to a level that I never experienced in my whole career. Now, we did some really cool stuff for Dove, the Unilever, but like, it's very different to talk with a community of World of Warcraft players in a community of Dove uh, consumers, you know, like, and, and same with Burger King, you know, people like, they were like some hardcore fans of Burger King, but this is like next level. You know, if you do something slightly wrong, people get pissed. Like, uh, you will spit on your face on Reddit in a way that you will never imagine. Um, and, and, and it's so big, you know, like uh, people are probably freaking out because I haven't even moved from my covers line. Um, so uh, it's, it's so big. It's funny because I told my friends, hey, I'm going to Activision. They were like, oh my God, man, you're going to work like uh, with, um, uh, with gaming and we know you love gaming. And, uh, and it's a big industry, it's growing so much. I'm like, man, it's super huge. What they're talking about is massive. It's not that it's going to be big in the future, it's big now. And then I asked them, like, what do you think is bigger, gaming or music? And they say, of course it's music. Like, what do you think is bigger, gaming or um, movies? It's like, of course it's movies. Can we flick this light? Yes. Look at that. You know, gaming is more than double global film and North America sports and global music. It's massive, it's huge, and it's growing. 
And the ch- one of the key challenges that I have on Activision is the fact that we've been incredibly successful, but what made us successful is not necessarily what's going to continue to make us successful moving forward. You know, so there is a massive like leadership challenge in my view, both for our agencies, and I know that there is a huge contingent of 72 here, uh, uh, and, and to us as a marketeers and to us as, as a strategy people uh, working in the company. Can you go uh, one more? And this is like to be like a speed dating because I have a lot of information to share. The presentation is like gaming is not bigger than you think. Um, and I wanted to give you like a perspective on the gaming industry and then show like one or two or three examples of stuff that we did and give some tips on how you can, if you're not in gaming, how your brand and your company can collaborate and, and, um, and take advantage of this uh, booming industry, right? Um, can you go back one? Yes. So today, like every, basically everyone is a gamer, you know, like we don't even say gamer anymore. Like uh, it doesn't define you. Like just like you don't say, oh, this person is a TV, TV viewer, you know, it doesn't define you. Everyone wants TV and everyone plays video games. Like look at those numbers, right? Three out of four people in the U.S., uh, 3.1 billion people uh, globally. Um, 75% of U.S. households has at least one gamer. Um, so it's really, really big. Go to the next one. Um, yeah, we launched um, COD Mobile. COD is Call of Duty. Like, I don't know if everyone plays, so I'll try to like, uh, explain. But COD is Call of Duty. We launched COD Mobile, I think it was mid-end of 2019. And we have um, how for, uh, 500 million downloads uh, of the game. You should go to the next one, which is Candy Crush. Candy Crush has 4.3 billion uh, downloads. It has 255 million monthly active users. Uh, so these are people that are going there and playing the game actively. It's, it's, a, it's a media channel, uh, if you think about it, right? I mean, like how many, uh, how many campaigns you need to air on TV to reach those people, right? I mean, it's like a massive number. Go to the next one, please. Yeah, if you think about the size of the franchises, and like I'm just comparing Call of Duty, World of Warcraft, Candy Crush with the box office of some of the biggest franchises in the, uh, in the movie industry, and gaming is bigger, you know, and people sometimes don't even realize that. Can you go to the next one? Um, yeah, and like the size and the growth is just half of the story. Go to the next one, please. Yes, like this is like the number of uh, minutes, right? Uh, the, number, the time that people spend on video game versus TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest. And people spend more time uh, in gaming. Uh, gaming today, and I'm getting ahead of myself. Who can leave that one? Um, uh, gaming today is much more, it's very different than what it was when Nilo Fernando was playing Mario. Okay? Like uh, when I was playing Mario as a kid, my mom would call me to have dinner. I would pause the game, go have dinner. She would be screaming. I would arrive late at the table. And I would shove the food quick to go back to, to defeat Bowser. And I could do that. Today, you can't do that. Most of the games are playing live. It's online. You're meeting with friends uh, in that environment. There is no pausing if you're playing Call of Duty Warzone. There is no pausing if you're playing FIFA, Battlefield, Fortnite. Those are not Activision Blizzard, but that's how it is today. You know, like game is very different. Like uh, the image that people have sometimes of being this dude in the basement, in the dark, in front of a PC playing, like that's really not how it is. You know, it's very, very different than, uh, than uh, what it was in the past or the stereotypical view that some people have uh, of gamers. And it's not just about uh, playing, you know, like there is this thing called streaming uh, and it's massive. It's huge, 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 huge. People spend like, like I have an internet chart showing the number of hours people spend uh, on streaming. You can go the ne- to the next one. Yeah. So. Yeah, there are more people watching game streams than HBO, Netflix, Hulu, ESPN combined. Yeah, it's insane if you think about it, right? Because like, uh, if if I went like thirty years back, twenty years back, and uh, and you ask me, uh, younger Fernando, uh, hey, uh, do you think there is a market for people watching video games? I'm like, I don't know. Like, I enjoy watching. Like, uh, I used to spend that. Uh, like, my parents wouldn't allow me to play for too many hours. So I would do like a sleepover in a friend's place and he would just fucking like play the whole night. You know, like, uh, and, uh, and I would enjoy watching him play because he was better. We, he had a, a Mega Drive, a Sega Genesis. Like, and uh, yeah, I, I'm not bullshitting you guys. I that stuff. Like, and we spend the whole night playing that thing. And I would enjoy as much playing as watching uh, him play. And, and, and people today, they, the, the streamers like, 
they have a whole community of people who like uh, love that. Uh, a team, a uh, lot of disrespect, like it's a whole world that if you're not into gaming, you, you're missing uh, because that's a very, very strong. Yeah, these are just some numbers. You can go, you can keep it. The next one. Uh, next one is esports. Uh, every time people ask me about esports, and like, uh, yes, it's growing. Uh, it's going to continue to grow. I think there was a bit of a hiccup during the pandemic. Like I remember before the pandemic, Activision invited me to come to watch the finals of the Overwatch League in Philly. Uh, and the, 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 the Budweiser, Budweiser had a massive activation there. Uh, the Bud Knight was there, took pictures of the Bud Knight. Uh, and like, uh, uh, and there were like 20,000 people in the state. They had like 20,000 people in the state. The state was full with people cheering. Um, with the pandemic, that slowed down a bit. But if you go to the next one, and if you look at the numbers, it's already a sizable uh, uh, audience. You know, it's larger than some real sports. You know what I mean? Like if you compare our uh, game, and it will continue to grow. And by the way, if you're looking to connect with Gen Z, you can go to the next one. Um, it's, a, it's a perfect environment to connect with Gen Z because they care and because they are there and because they're engaged. Uh, I think the question is like, how do you do it? Right, I mean, because that's the thing, you know. Remember when I said that, like, uh, the community would like spit on your face on Reddit if you like, yeah. They, like, it, um, no one is like looking forward to watching your ad, like, um, in in life, period. But the game is even worse, you know. Like, so if you want to connect and if you want to capture attention uh, and engagement and all that good stuff uh, and benefit from this, you need to find authentic ways that add value. Uh, to the play. I'll talk a little bit about that later. Yeah, gamers are everyone. I touched on that. Go to the next one. I love this one. There are as, just as many people age 50 and older playing games than those under 18. And there are more women playing games than teenager boys. And again, this is like just to break the stereotypes. You know, like, so if you think like, well, yeah, my brand is a CPG brand. Uh, imagine that I was still the VP for Dove. Like, I would probably think like, do, like, do I want to be into gaming? Like, well, you should. You know, like, because there is a game that your target audience cares about. You know, maybe you shouldn't be in Call of Duty if, like, uh, if you're targeting uh, 45 to 65-year-old women, right? Because it skews male, that specific game. But there is a game where you will find uh, the audience that you're looking for. Go to the next one. Uh, game is more than about than winning. Yes, yeah, it's a place where people connect. And look, I mean, on the pandemic, it went through the roof. You know, because, you know, like we are all like locked at home. So people were meeting in Call of Duty, you know, like it was very counterintuitive like that uh, in a, when the world went through difficulty, a place that's a war zone, it's Call of Duty, became a place where people find peace and connect. Uh, but that's what it is, you know, like people play with a headset. Like my friends, we schedule to meet our squad in Call of Duty, say, hey, let's drop at 9 p.m. That's how we talk. Uh, and then everyone goes and we connect and we talk and we like, trash talk each other and it's just fun. Um, by the way, I have a great friend from ABI that grew up playing video games with me, who is Marcel Marcondes. Uh, hopefully I will see him uh, this Friday. Um, I'm on the ABI event. I heard there is free beer, so I'm looking forward to that. So uh, uh, social, yeah, it's social. You know, like it's not anymore um, me playing by myself in my room, like dimming the lights down so that it looks nicer. It's a place where people connect. You can go to the next one. How am I doing with time? Did I screw up completely or I'm still okay? Yeah, okay, cool, thank you. <laughs> it's his fault now. <laughs> yeah, okay, cool. So, uh, so look, I, I brought some examples because um, I brought like, one example that I that I really like is something that we did with 72, and that was driving the brand innovator scene crazy. I'm uh, trying to swap my presentation because um, uh, the video just got ready like yesterday, which was after uh, the uh, the traffic in time uh, for the event. Um, and uh, and I really like it because again, it's like a, it's social, it's unexpe unexpected, it's fun. Uh, like Call of Duty is a war game, but people are there to live their fantasy of being like a badass with their friends and have fun, you know? Like, so it's not really like doom and gloom and serious. 
Um, and it's something that we did that I think is really cool. Like uh, it's based on the insight that we know that our target audience follows a lot of like travel influencers, you know, like who doesn't, right? I mean, they're all, there are some that are huge. Um, and, um, and we thought like, how can we show our brand in a very unexpected way to that audience, who by the way, is also audience for uh, Call of Duty. Uh, and this is the idea that came up with, it's something that I really like. I have a one minute, 30 second case study. If you can go to the next one and just hit and it will play. Half of all adults under 40 follow at least one travel influencer on Instagram. If you follow their feeds, you'll see they're constantly one-upping each other. To launch Warzone Pacific, we assembled a squad of the biggest influencers in the world and gave them a chance to visit a place they've never been to before, Caldera, the fictitious island accessible only in our game. We took unused, never posted before footage of them in a tropical location and Warzoneified their posts with visual effects mimicking real gameplay. Each influencer dropped their post during the week of the game's launch, immediately turning Caldera into the new IT destination. We then expanded our guest list, sending athletes, and even a White Lotus star to the island. By hacking our influencers' content, we shocked and awed in a way social media hadn't seen before, generating over 8.5 million views in one week and earning over 15 million social media impressions. And we did it all without shooting a thing. is the fact that that 10 minutes, that's like, can you even speak slow now? <laughs> you're like, shoot. Um, okay, you're holding the five minutes, just me fine. Okay, I'll be, I'll be fine. Uh, so like, one thing that I really like about this is that the results, usually, historically, every time I went to this again, um, we do like a trade. You know, it's very similar to movies. You know what I mean? Like, uh, historically, Call of Duty was, we launched like one premium title per year, uh, it's usually like October, November, close to the holidays, because all the kids will order for, for holidays. And um, and it's like, and we celebrate the box office for that weekend, just like a movie, like how many copies we sold over the weekend and all that. And all the media plan is very heavily concentrated there. Um, it, it, it's evolving to be much more of like an always on platform, right? I mean, war zone is constantly, like um, Warzone is our battle royale free to play mode, which is Caldera, which is the Pacific island that you guys saw. Uh, and we need to keep the interest up, you know, like throughout the year, um, because that's kind of like how the future will be. You know, like Netflix is not, doesn't drop all the movies in November, right? I mean, they spread the engagement like uh, throughout the year. So that's where I think the industry is probably going. Uh, and and, and just doing trailers becomes, even though we do some really cool shit, it becomes less efficient than doing different stuff. And that's why it's a real proof that creativity matters. So this thing that I just shown you guys was less investment than we normally do for a trailer. We use the influencers uh, organic reach as a channel, uh, plus the share, shareability and plus the PR that we got, and it did way better then the trailer that we produce to launch Pacific. You know, so remember when I said that like one of the channels that we have is that what made us successful to this day is not necessarily what's going to make us successful like three, five years from now. This is, a, I think, is a really cool example and it's one that comes from 72 uh, of like how we can be innovative uh, and introduce gaming in a way that's very different than, uh, than has been done before. Another example that's also from 72, like 72, give like some extra tip for me to like feel the presentations of 72 examples. I'm sure like, uh, they have been our partner for a very long time and very proud of the work uh, that we do with these guys. Like um, there is a mode on Call of Duty that's the zombies. 
you know, and, and what we normally do, we drop a trailer for zombies, um, and then there, there are zombies, and we shoot the zombies. Like, uh, we did one that was really cool this year. It had a track from the Eilish, like uh, really cool stuff. But what really performed better is when we do it differently. And this is one activation that we did for the launch of the zo zombies on Vanguard. Vanguard is, was our premium launch last year. And it's an activation that we did in London. We shot in London, but the content became available globally. So if you can play this one. to go about it and five, three or five, 35? <laughs> okay, yeah. I'll be good. Uh, and I think it's a, it's a really cool thing that you see more and more in my view, which is re reality bleeding into game and gaming bleeding into reality. You know, like uh, when, I, when I keep hearing like metaverse, 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 that's a little bit, a, a bit of that for me. You know, as games become more realistic and become a real space where people meet, like uh, you're going to see games impacting culture even more so, and you're going to see also culture bleeding into game even more so. The last example that I have, and there's no case study, you can just play that the next one, it doesn't have sound, so don't, don't freak out, uh, was like a for all stars for Candy Crush, like instead of just like, usually we do a lot of performance marketing for Candy Crush and it works really well, um, but we need to do more than that if you want to build the brand from the long run. Um, people that play Candy Crush, some people can, are, are, really, are really like competitive, Competitive, but not really competitive. You know what I mean? Like uh, they just like to compete, but not really. Because Candy Crush, you can, you can, you can, you can play, you can hit it. Um, so um, one of the key activity, activities that we had for the whole year for Candy Crush was basically like a a, a competition, uh, and we did a competition in our app, and then you would qualify, you go through phases, and then the top, I think, like sixteen competed like live, uh, and we stream. Uh, the competition, you know, extremely huge, like uh, I spoke about that uh, before. So just like, again, a different way to go about it because you understand the target, because you understand the insight of the brand and give to people something that adds value uh, to them. Go to the next one. Yeah, just wrapping it up. Uh, next. Uh, yeah, I love this quote, you know, and if I were to leave you with one thing in this presentation, like keep, keep this one. You know, like uh, it, it was from the New York Times and it was something around, I'm not going to read, but something along the lines of like in the past, um, we were friends and because of that, we played video games together. That was Nero Fernando uh, playing Nintendo with his friends or Sega Genesis with uh, his friends overnight. Um, and today is more like uh, because we play, we are friends, you know, like, uh, and it's really like that. You know, like I play, I play soccer every Thursday in Miami and there are two or three guys that finish soccer. They don't even go to have a beer with us with the rest of the team. They go home to play and they play every Thursday with other friends from other states. Uh, and, and, and if you understand that, uh, it will be easier for you to find ideas to connect your brand with your target audience. And then the last slide, um, 
is this, just to wrap it up, gaming is bigger than you think, right? I mean, think about the size of the market. Gamers are everyone, yeah? Like, uh, don't, don't think like just the stereotypical view that people sometimes have from gaming, especially the boards of your companies. Uh, gaming truly engages its audience. Um, it's, just, no, it's just just playing, also watching, like streaming is a thing. Uh, gaming social, game absorbs and creates culture. And you know, like if you are a brand or a company and you want to be on the space, I think that the main thing is for you to, of course, you know what the target audience for your brand and your company are. Uh, try to identify what games have the best overlap uh, with that. Understand the game and the community, what makes people tick. Because slapping your logo in a game or uh, doing stuff that like, it's kind of like classic merchandising that you would do on TV, is not going to work. You know, you need to really think about how can you add value uh, to those players uh, and you only be able to do that if you truly understand uh, that community. I have lots of brands that come to us uh, to do partnerships and to do uh, things. Uh, it's a 50-50. It's a big deal for hit and miss, to be honest with you. Many people come and it's clear that they have no idea like uh, about the game itself or what makes that community tick. And it's really important to understand that because if I did something a little bit off for Burger King or for Dove, people may uh, speak crap about us in social media for 48 hours and they move on. On gaming, it's hardcore. You know, like, uh, it's like, a, they will slap your face on Reddit. So you really need to, like, or, or Discord, like, you really need to uh, know uh, how to connect and what makes people tick. And that's all I had uh, for you guys. Thank you very much. We have a... Woo!